Welcome back to the Sim Hangar. My name's Mark. In this video, we're going to take a look at a new VR headset from Pico XR, a company we haven't heard from in a little while. It's a Pico 4 Ultra. I'm going to keep this video short and sweet and focus on the specifications. I'm a flight sim enthusiast, so I'm assessing this from a simulation perspective for use with a PC. From the launch announcement made on the 20th of August, we can see to all intents and purposes it's kept the same form factor as the Pico 4. If you follow my channel, you'll know the Pico 4 was one of my favourites. Well balanced, comfortable, and the Pico 4 Ultra looks like it's no exception, coming in at 580 grams, which is a weight pretty much the same as the HP Reverb G2. As per the Pico 4, their back head strap incorporates the battery, in this case, it's a slightly larger one at 5,700 milliamp hour, which compares favorably to the 4,800 milliamp hour contained in the Quest 3. Both controller and hand tracking is built in with four environment tracking cameras. Color pass through has been substantially enhanced with two 32 megapixel cameras, as well as an ITOF depth sensing camera. As we run through the specifications and as they stack up, if you're getting the vibe that this headset is really made for mixed reality, I think you'd be right, allowing you to merge the real world with your VR environment. Like its predecessor, the Pico 4, this is designed as a standalone, but can be linked to the PC either wirelessly or via link cable. As per the Quest 3, it features the Qualcomm Snapdragon XR2 Gen 2 chip, has increased memory at 12GB and storage at 256GB. This means, as per the Quest 3, it doesn't have a display port, although it will support the AV1 codec for faster data transfer and improved image quality. Field of view is likely to be in and around the same as the Pico 4 of about 105 degrees, and the headset will be compatible with Wi-Fi 7 for maximum data transfer. Surprisingly, the resolution of the headset has not changed at 2160 by 2160. During the launch, they went to some extent to explain that clarity and image quality is not just about resolution, with a substantial increase in the eye buffer resolution. That's a transition from raw render to the image you see in your headset, and screen brightness has been increased by 25%. In effect, what they're saying is that the image is far more clearer and sharper, with greater contrast ratios, and have achieved this without the need to increase the resolution. As always, the proof of the pudding, they say, will be in the eating. We'd have to test it to know first. One big positive from my perspective is it includes auto color correction. During the launch, they confirm compatibility with various development platforms and VR standards, as well as the common variants of OpenXR. Pico XR have released a trailer. I'll leave links to that in the notes below. And they put a lot of emphasis in two areas. The one, as I mentioned earlier, is mixed reality being able to mix your VR environment with the real world. MR certainly seems to be coming of age now, and as part of that, something that really interested me. As an optional extra, Pico will be releasing some motion trackers. Two trackers that you simply strap to your legs or arms, or perhaps a peripheral device, that appears to provide full body tracking, using multiple sensors within a very small and light device. As a flight simmer, I tend to be fairly stationary, but this interests me from a motion compensation point of view for anyone using a motion platform. Might make the whole subject of motion compensation so much simpler. The headset comes with two controllers, both with haptic feedback, and notice they're now ringless. A step up from a Pico 4 counterpart. So far so good, and it's clear that they've got the Quest 3 in their sights. But I mentioned earlier there were two areas of focus. One was mixed reality, and the other... Well, it was all a little Apple-esque, and to my mind, clearly focused on Apple Vision Pro Market, as they've adapted a fair number of functionality elements. This includes real-time spatial computing, ensuring real-time mapping of the environment and objects, multi-monitor or multi-screen displays up to 20, I believe, which is more than any other platform. I use three monitors. I have enough difficulty with three screens. And there was a fair amount more, but I'm not going to ponder and stay on these as I'm more focused at it from a flight sim perspective. And like any standalone VR headset, you're going to need some fairly heavy duty hardware in order to run it via link cable or especially wirelessly. RTX 4080 Ti Super or above 
from a GPU point of view would be my recommendation and an i9 10th gen or above CPU or the AMD equivalent. The launch on the 20th of August was China only. We don't have a date for when it will be launched in Europe and I can only assume it will not be available in the USA at this point as per Pico 4 and pricing is yet to be confirmed but it will be substantially more than the Pico 4 and speculation because that's all it is at this time is varying between 600 and 800 US dollars. The Pico 4, if you had enough PC grunt to run it, for Microsoft Flight Simulator was an excellent headset and the Pico 4 Ultra offers greater promise. But as I said earlier, only time will tell. Is this headset something that interests you? Would it be practical for flight simulation? Let me know your views in the comments below. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you found it useful and informative. Stay well, look after yourselves. See you again soon and ciao for now.